What's up, Crypto Crew, and welcome back, or if this is your first time, I'm Captain Crypto Might, actively escaping the Matrix, scoping out the crypto ocean, so if you like your odds, get on the boat, stay up to date, thumbs up, and join the hunt. Into the boat! Crypto Crew, today we'll hear more from Casper Def Ori Newman in his interview with Ankit of the XXAM podcast. Again, it's great to hear from the guys we don't see too often, yet are working hard behind the scenes to building Casper to what it inevitably will become. Stay tuned, Crypto Crew. I really think the technology behind Caspa is unique and is going to work in a cash-based system. Prove all things, hold fast, that which is good. Protect your Caspa coins, bitcoins, and other crypto investments through self-custody on a cold storage. And in our opinion, the Tangent Wallet is your best option. Get 10% off using code Crypto Crew, and you can get another 50% off on your second Tangent card set. This runs till November 7th, 2025. Thanks so much for your consideration and support in advance. And may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you all. 2017, 2018, you were there. What was your role at that time? There was a lot of brainstorming. I was a developer, but we thought about many things together and the brainstorm there. In the beginning, there was like some kind of research team and development team. There was some kind of a bridge between uh, the development team and the research team. But, you know, it's not like my official role. So when, when did this go became Rust? Like when did this transition start to happen from, hey, we need to move from Go to Rust? So it happened after lunch. So we, we launched uh, with uh, Go. We decided that we want to go to uh, 10 BTS. And then uh, we, we just knew that it won't be possible with Go. It, maybe it will, but it will be a big uh, headache, you know? So yeah, we started uh, this uh, transition of uh, rewriting it and uh, with more uh, performance in mind. And the, yeah, these, these transitions, I think, if, if people are not from the technical background, I think these transitions are very challenging. It takes a long time. We wanted to launch and uh, there was a lot of questions of how we launch exactly. The initial idea was to launch with the pre-mined model, like pre-allocating some of the uh, supply to the developers, pay for in, uh, to the investors and uh, such stuff. And then uh, I talked about it uh, a little bit uh, with the team and mainly with Jonathan. We will use some kind of uh, mechanism to sell the hash rates to the community. Something like ICO, but for a uh, mining power. I see, yeah. We thought that it might be conceived as a more pure because technically the protocol, the consensus protocol is untouched and uh, mm -hmm. there is no pre-mine and nothing in the protocol that prefers you, but still uh, you have a first mover advantage or a mining uh, market. But uh, after some time, we saw that this can't really uh, catch on. And we thought that this kind of cryptocurrency doesn't really have a uh, potential. So we kind of decided to close the labs <laughs> and just uh, launch Casper, a uh, completely fair launch, and uh, see what will be, with, what will be, and uh, maybe the investors will get something, maybe they, they want. The investor didn't really care because they didn't invest like big amount of money. Like I think it was eight million dollars they uh, invested, which especially in like uh, that time, uh, like 2017, it wasn't really big for a uh, crypto, you know. Two days before lunch, like we didn't want anyone to get the uh, advantage, so we discussed it openly in Discord, in the public Discord. So we thought about heavy algorithm, but there was already a project. Who developed, who developed a heavy ash called the optical bitcoin so we tweaked it a little bit so they won't have any advantage of the others we didn't really think that they uh, will interest anyone and we thought that maybe there will be like 10 miners 20 miners but then there were thousands <laughs> we weren't really prepared for that there was some kind of a bug that because uh, the fair launch was uh, the launch was a little bit hurried, rushed. It made the block headers size a little bit too big. It could handle it, like in our test, it uh, handled it. But the messy network we had of thousands of miners, it created a big bottleneck on the network, and the network was very chaotic. <laughs> but uh, because of uh, this network, it issues it to many far away dogs. We had uh, to kind of uh, start over, launch a new Genesis block, and it was like an entirely new Genesis. It was like it's a, a Genesis with the uh, commitment of the previous UTX subset. Okay. So it's like uh, 
it, it was just like the easiest way to say it. we fixed those bugs now everything that goes uh, beyond this point is uh, not counted anymore and in 24 hours we launch with this uh, new genesis or something like this this is not on the launch day right so this would have been later on yeah like about two weeks three weeks in when so within the two first weeks you're saying you, you had thousand miners joined the network yeah i don't know the exact number at least hundreds like right right i i personally wasn't aware of that i mean that's a testament to the work you guys did i think like the interest was a combination of uh, two things so we launched uh, with a cpu friendly algorithm like it's not a cpu friendly algorithm but there was uh, no uh, gpu miner so cpu uh, could mine it so it was a project that was funded by VCs, really a serious project, but still a fair launch, CPU mineable. So this kind of uh, combination attracted of a lot of people because anyone could mine it from his ho- ho- home computer and then it also had this uh, reputation bad. How you personally felt at that time in terms of your own safety net? So after Dragos dissolved, I didn't have any uh, degree or certification before, but because I was really inspired by the people I worked with, I um, decided to to start a degree in uh, mathematics in the computer science. So I just started my studies immediately after uh, Dragos dissolved, but I was also the only developer left. Yeah, I was really worried about safety net, so I was just focused with that. So uh, after some time, uh, Michael sat on uh, to join and help me. Uh, eventually, he became the lead developer, and I'm very happy for it because I don't have his uh, leadership uh, skills. The team Casper has now is amazing, and I couldn't do it. So I'm really happy with how things uh, ended up eventually. Before that, he was uh, mainly focused on uh, research. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he didn't uh, like before the. Uh, Casper Lunch, he didn't write uh, one by uh, line of code in uh, the Casper graphics. He's a really uh, talented developer and uh, also a great leader. So now, fast forward to 2025. Can you draw any parallels between, you know, early days of Bitcoin 2013, uh, 2014, 2015, to sort of early days of Casper? For me, Casper is still very early, right? It's only been, what, four years? Actually, coming up to four years. Can you draw any parallels between the communities of both are there anything that comes to you sort of that stood out or stands out to you the Casper community in like uh, main uh, bitcoin at uh, those days is pretty uh, focused on decentralization and uh, trustlessness but i also see some uh, properties that the uh, uh, Casper community lacks mainly uh, technical knowledge i think uh, at that time there were many participants in the bitcoin forums and the bitcoin mailing list and the uh, Casper still needs to improve it, uh, that aspect. It is improving. The developer team is uh, growing, but it's still, uh, in terms of knowledge, it's still a uh, center right. We uh, just launched a Q&A uh, uh, website for Casper, so this is a uh, part of what I had in mind. The idea was that everyone can uh, uh, participate and have his own uh, reputation and uh, uh, incentive to join. So I know that in the beginning, it will be mostly me writing stuff. And uh, I even uh, started with writing my own questions and then answering them. But it's really important for me to uh, develop this knowledge base. And, uh, you know, a lot of people ask things in uh, Discord and X, and it's really hard to find it after, you know. So for me, one of the biggest missions in the of uh, Casper is uh, to improve uh, the knowledge base and uh, to uh, build the developer base. Shout out to Ori Newman and the Casper Core dev team. Shout out to Ankit and the XXIM podcast. More Casper content to come in a vid near you. Show me the money. (laughs) And before we go, Crypto Crew, shout out to our partners at Blowfin. I mean, if you are tired of exchanges freezing when the markets nuke, you want stability and a proven track record, which is exactly what Blowfin offers. Even while the October flash crash went down, no lag, no downtime. It's derivative first, so you can hedge your crypto investments with perps and keep fees low while you lag in and out. Onboarding is fast, no KYC flow for sign up and access is worldwide.
worldwide. The security of Blowfin is tight, fire blocks custody and proof of reserve, and another plus is that they don't run internal market makers, meaning you are not getting counter traded. Right now, Crypto Crew, Blowfin set up an event with up to 600 USDT and bonuses, and watch out for the Halloween event until November 2nd, 2025, where you can have unlimited draw, spin and win on Blowfin with a chance to win an iPhone 17 and or 0.3 BTC. Check out the link in the description box below. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Stick around. Fix your mind before you get to the grind. And with that said, let's continue to escape the matrix. Let's continue to be on the lookout for the next big thing here on the crypto ocean. Grow in grace and let's make some crypto waves. Say I.